this car in the future will probably be one of the most desirable classic cars to own. I think it's going to outclass a lot of other Jaguars of the same era. Well, not the XK8, but certainly uh, I think all the others. On a long trip, the S-Type Jaguar is sensational. The holiday starts when you get into this car. It's such a lovely place to be. You're surrounded by leather. You're encapsulated in leather. Beautiful carpets, beautiful wood trims, and just a lovely design. And look, I, I see it in the, in the XK8 as well. You look at the dash and you can see that there's a similar shape to the uh, to the Spitfire wings. Now, I don't know whether that's my imagination or that's intentional, but you certainly know that there is something about the S-Type in common with the XK8. And I don't believe you get the, as much of that in the other Jags of this era. They're, they are similar cars. Australian roads. Well, I don't know how I compare them to roads in England. I haven't been to England. I only know what I see from uh, shots of, of blokes over there driving down these tiny little head road places, putting their boot in, going around blind corners and that. I don't know. Where ours are different. Ours are open. We can see to the horizon. The trouble we've got is we've got to watch for all the potholes and all the rubbish on our roads. Australian roads are notoriously bad. They're not super, you know, there's worse roads, but you need to keep an eye out for potholes, especially after periods when we've had a flood, where the water seeps under the road and the trucks go over and create these potholes. It's a big country and it takes our service blokes, seems like a long, long time to work out where the holes are. And most drivers are so used to dodging them that we don't complain about it anymore, we just get on with it. The S-Type, look, very. I don't think there's another Jag that really encapsulates the, the theory of space, pace and grace better than an S-Type Jaguar. I know it's controversial and people will say, oh, you're nonsense, I've, I've had this car, I've had that car, whatever. But think about it. The car definitely, it has the biggest interior that Jaguar produced. I'm six foot two and I've got plenty of headroom. I can't reach the, the front of the car. Rear passengers have got plenty of room as well. It's a comfortable car. So it's certainly got the space. This is a 3 litre V6, which has had all the inductions upgraded by Jag, as they do. Jaguar never built slow cars. So it's not a rocket ship, but it's certainly lively. If you use your, use your shifter, move into manual mode, put it into sport mode, and put your foot down, they're sprightly. So there's your pace. Now the grace, well, honestly, it's a beautiful place to be. Surrounded by wooden leather, got beautiful carpets, um, insulated from what's going on outside to a large degree. There's no noise. They talk about electric cars. Oh, they're quiet. Well, honestly, if, a, if an electric car is more quiet than this, I'll go there. Because all you hear in this car is the road noise. You don't hear the engine unless you put your food into it.
repaired in Jaguar, a car company from England, where they've got little tiny roads, back lanes, the odd bit of freeway, but nothing like the open road we've got. How did that company make such beautiful touring cars? They are just so good on the open road. I don't know how they did it, but they did it. You can drive an S-Type all day. You're not tired when you get out. They're wonderful cars. Now, what makes them so comfortable is they're so unobtrusive. They're just a friendly place to be. There's none of this rubbish about modern, modern cars where if you drift to one side of the road it jerks the steering wheel out of your hand and plays up. No, this car doesn't need it because if you take your hands off the wheel it goes straight. It goes where it's put and it does what it's told and it does it without any grizzling. So all these advances in newer cars, realistically, we've got a Hyundai, it's got everything on earth going for it. I've turned 90% of it off because it just makes it a horribly pushy car. It's not a pleasant place to be. It's like Kim Jong-il sitting on your shoulder telling you how to drive a car according to his rules. Well, no. When you look at the S-Type Jaguar, the thing about it is, they're reliable. These cars do have issues, but when you, when you think about it, they're not issues with Jaguars. They're issues with all cars of this era. Because in this era, they moved from brass tees and that in your pressure hoses and heater hoses and all of that, into plastic tees. Now they've got a limited lifespan, so with a car of this vintage, you need to keep an eye on that when you're doing your servicing. So, cars of this era all had those issues. S-types 
in any variance are a beautiful car. But if I had my pick, I've got the, the 3 litre V6, great car. If I had my pick again, or if I was looking to buy one in the future, which I probably will, I think I'll hang out for a V8 one. I might hang out for a V8 supercharged one, but I don't know. I think the six cylinders are very, very good car, very practical car. I know that the V8s are also a very practical car. I haven't had much experience with the supercharged V8s, but other than, we know that they're quick. So if I was looking for another S-Type, the only thing I'd do to improve on the one I've got is probably hang out for a V8. Here's a question for you. What has a modern car got that an S-Type doesn't? Not much.